<laughs> hey, welcome back to the Reckless Hope Show. I'm Jordan Blake, your host. I'm here with a very special guest, Isaac Witte. Um, say hello. Isaac. Hi, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> Isaac, one of the funniest guys, uh, for sure, he's the funniest guy we've ever had on the Hope Show. Now, that's a very low bar, not to. Is that right? Yeah, because we have had yeah. funny people on here. Like, it's just not a. You're the first like, con. Like, you've gone out of your way to have non funny people on. No, no, I think, yeah, see? See what I mean? You just did it. Right there it was. He's that smooth. No. Isaac, um, he's, he's a stand-up comic. He's a comic writer of sorts, right? Yeah. But yeah. he's done, uh, he was on Letterman, uh -huh. and then Conan. Right. So you've done, you've done the, the talk show Letterman thing. so long ago, it, feel, it feels like talking about a different life. It was back in 2004. Right, but Conan, I just watched it. It's hilarious. Conan was six years ago, but yeah, not, so, somewhat recent. No, I didn't just like, like, I mean, I watched on YouTube last night. And yeah, like, yeah. You know, but I showed my own family and they were dying. It's like, it was one of those things where you're, we were talking about this a little bit before. You have a natural talent for it, but then you've worked very hard at your craft, so mm -hmm. you can tell. So it's yeah. not just a... Right. Yeah, I started when I was 20 years old. Uh, I was 20 years old in May of 96. Yeah. And um, I'd always wanted to do it since I was in the eighth grade. And um, you wanted to be a stand-up comic. Yeah, I used to. There used to be a show called Evening of the Improv, and it was uh, every every Saturday night at ten o'clock on Fox. There was a, there was another show. It was all stand-ups, and it was like now famous people, and I would tape them and watch them over and over and over again. Be obsessed with watching. Because back then you had to tape. That was yeah. I had a VCR. Yeah, I yeah. Oh yeah, VHS. VHS. That was the yeah. only way to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but so that's like, because not a lot of kids want to be a stand-up comic. I mean, that's sort of a... Especially not back then. Right. I mean, right. that was, yeah. Now was, everybody wants to be on TV. Well, I mean... Well, and they want their own channel of some sort. Right. They're all going to be... Cele you, you, <laughs> I remember back when you when you wanted to be a celebrity, you uh, had something you wanted to be famous for. Right. And it, it wasn't just... You honed a crap. I'll just be famous. <laughs> That's just the stupidest thing. It's like the Kardashians. Like, you know what I mean? They, you breathe oxygen and therefore you are famous. off somehow. Yeah. But <laughs> it seems to work for them, definitely. Yeah. Um, and this is, this is kind of what... Because I was a musician before, before Reckless and before the addiction or during the addiction, but... That's what we have on the show. It's a story about redemption. We're going to talk to him about his life and some things, and he's going to, he's going to talk about that. But one of the things that I, th I do want to talk about is like with, with music, it's kind of like comedy. Yeah. Now there's YouTube, right? Right. So I used to do these drum lessons and stuff, and it's like every kid, no, I just want to do what Travis Barker does. And it's like, well, <laughs> the kid's been, Barker's been drumming since he had baby teeth. So it's kind of, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's like a 20 year gap there. Yeah. You're going to have to do these fundamentals. Yeah. And so like with comedy, you don't just, you don't just end up on Letterman. You don't end up on no. Conan. Like, you're not just like, you no. don't tell a funny joke at a bar and someone goes, that guy, book him right now. No, it's a long process. But in, there's this belief that that's what happens. There's this sort of that hangs out like, well, yeah, yes. Well, it's <laughs> it's so different now. But yeah, when, when I was when I was uh, on TV, it was, it was Cinda tape. And then they would go, we like this joke and this joke and this joke. So they like, cut your jokes? They wouldn't cut the jokes, but they would say, we don't, this joke, they wouldn't say that this joke is bad, but they'd say, this joke is not right for the show. <laughs> this joke is not right for the show. These three jokes are right for the show, so send us another set with those three jokes and three new ones that we haven't seen. So I had then, no idea that so was So then you would tape another show, and it had to go very well, and it, it's... I don't, is it like that with music? When you, anytime you put a camera in the room, you can get almost guarantee it's not going to go well. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like yeah. that, especially. It's definitely like that with comedy. Yeah, because then I feel like you, when you're not doing it for yourself anymore, when you're doing it for someone else, you're that's thinking when, about right, the concept, the, you know, all that's all that's. Uh, but that's why I wanted to talk about just bring that out is because it's it, you always know these guys that start out that want to be musicians and the ones that sign on to a label is the difference is they're grinders. I mean, they just, they don't quit. It's like, I mean, yeah. because you play a lot of shows where people think you suck before you ever do anything where people think you're good. I mean, yes. there's no, there's no, and, yes. you, and, and it's like most people can't handle the mental shutdown because guys, and I'll tell you this, what I know yeah. from, you know, just stand up comedy in general is like a lot of, a lot of, a lot of shutdowns on the road to, you're a funny guy you're because so you've got to develop your craft. I mean, there's... You have to actually... You have to really, really like what you're doing in order to be a stand-up comic because I was pretty bad for the first two years, <laughs> you know? But that's... Yeah, comedy club 
people that run comedy clubs, like they're aware of that. <laughs> no. <There> was, <laughs> anybody? Uh, There's a curve. It's extremely rare that someone is funny from the get go, and um, you know, it's if you stay, you have to st you have to bomb a whole lot of times. The courage to fail before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's almost it's part of it to to fail. You know, which, and, that, and you went after that sober originally, right? I mean, like you went yeah, after yeah, I was courage. Twenty years old. Yeah, I was. I, uh, well, that I mean. For not too long, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> they, what they do is uh, where I started. When you MC a show, you got you got two free drinks a night. Oh, nice. so I I would go. I would say to the bartender, "What drink has the most booze in it?" Long Island iced tea. Long Island iced there tea. There it is. Yeah, there yeah. It. <laughs> I would get two Long Island iced teas, and by the end of the show, I was smashed. But you know, but that I it was. You know, that was just can kind of hand in hand with going to the comedy club. Right. Well, working became like, well, of course I'm going to get wasted. You know. Right. So. It's one of those, it's, it's one of those, like, like, like drumming. Imagine, it's a profession right? that you can do. Hammer. Right. I and mean, sort of, they let you do it. It's like, it's, you don't have to, you know, we talked about that a little before the show, but, um, so, so you, you kind of grew up in church. You had somewhat of a church background, right? I have a church background. Yeah. It was never a real thing to me. My parents were in the ministry. Um. Back in the year 1989, um, yeah, there were 8,000 churches that received a VHS tape. And Fire by Night and killed. one Wednesday a month, they would watch Fire by Night. You know? They just killed. And it that's just, what my parents were on. Yeah. And so I, I, I grew up, like, watching my parents perform in churches and uh, doing comedy. So, you know, as much as an angsty teenager liked to think... I'm gonna do something way different than my parents. I ended up doing comedy, but they did sketch comedy. Right. I did stand up comedy. Are way different. It's way different. No. Yeah. You, yeah absolutely. <laughs> I'm an individual. <laughs> <laughs> you dang right you are. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. So at that point, uh, you kind of got down. I'm gonna let you talk about it, but you you kind of got started on a road of addiction. Is what comedy kind of what took you there? But really, you 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 nailed it earlier. You said more of it was like a self identification I mean that you were searching for right yeah it's it's, it's not really I don't lean in that well it wasn't really a question no no, no. that's so that's that's okay. what it is <laughs> no that's what it is I mean, I'm no Conan as, so, I mean don't, don't get used to that as man. I've as I've as it's it's much easier to see what it was looking back on it because it, it really was all about self-definition because you know like the way things are now even if you're not in show business you know like you have, especially with guys I think yeah You'll ask, you know, someone will say, what do you do? And they'll pretty much, without even knowing they're doing it, they'll, they'll be like, I'll not only tell you what I do, I'll tell you what I am. I yeah, am like a they salesman. Peak, they peacock out a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, you're right. I, I am a comedian. They relate you know? to it, yeah. Yeah, they want to, they, they want to, this is, this is why I'm worth it, you know. Man, that's so I, true. Yeah. I'm, I'm good at this. I can prove myself that I'm worth it at this. And so... Yeah, we did, We just go so much further than this is what I do for a living. Right. <laughs> right. And what was crazy was show business, you can identify with this, I'm sure. Show business is such a trap in that you can be doing nothing with your life and yeah. feel like you're doing something because everyone goes, wow, you can drum. Yeah. You, know? you can even be declining. Right. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. You're descending. I mean, you're, you're in He's full... a drummer. You hear yeah. all the time. Like, he's talented. But that's but, your identity. Uh, and like, yes, and that is why I'm worth it. And you know, like I would, I, I, I remember having conversations in airports with like guys I'd find out they're multimillionaires and they'd be like, you're a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah. It's no, such I, a yeah. lie. I would, I <laughs> fell for it. Like I'm somebody, I'm, I'm successful like this guy, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm renting a room in Brooklyn, you know, like it's, it, uh, you can afford to rent a room in Brooklyn. You did pretty well. Doing pretty well. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it was back in 2004. That's probably why the millionaires were, they were jealous. 700 bucks for my room. Yeah. Living wow. with a stranger. Yeah. <laughs> no. wow. But now that would be like, that would, that same room is probably 1200. Oh, well, no. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, so you, that ultimately, I mean, with the comedy, because the comedy is a mask in a way. I mean, mm -hmm. it is. It's just like drumming or, or whatever, because like mm -hmm. you said, I would come back to my hometown, like Salina, you know, down the road or whatever, and I remember one time I was at Dairy Deal, which is just a little, like, joint off the side of the road, and it's great hamburgers. It's awesome. Yeah. And a guy was like, that's Jordan. You got signed to a label, and it's like, 
I remember at that time they were talking about it and everybody was, you know, it was cool or whatever. And I remember my label just got sold to another label and they had failed to pick up me. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of like, if you guys have, don't know, I mean, you're familiar, but it's like, yeah, we want all these guys, but not him. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. in the industry, it's like, now I'm like ostracized and embarrassed. Right. But I come back home, I'm like, yeah, that's me. I'm, I play. But you still had to yeah. take on that. Like, Even though well, you're, it you're did happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're like, you don't, you don't tell that story. I mean, so your mask just grows. I mean, oh, you just man. get better at wearing it every day. And as, uh, I felt like such a phony defining myself that way because, I mean, years later, people would go like, he's been on Letterman. One, Tom Green was the guest host. Two, it was like, it was so long ago. And there I am ha having to pretend like, yeah, it's a big deal that I did that 15 years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? It's crazy and impressive, though. In my like, mind, yeah, yeah it, it is. But, it but, is. But, but at the same time, to wear that as your badge of honor as a way you define yourself is pretty mm -hmm. sad. Being, you know, most, right. I, I, in my mind, I was like, I'm more of a cokehead than I am a comedian. Right, because you know? you're, <laughs> you're just derailed. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing when it when it's not an achievement, it's your life. Yeah. When it's not just something that oh yeah, you can't even enjoy it because it's like it happens way too fast. I and mean, that's one thing I'll. You yeah, know. yeah. It um, it was, it was, uh, yeah. It's it's funny how, it starts as something fun to do on the weekends, <laughs> and then it turns into just something that you do alone every once in a while because other people don't know how to do it right. You know. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, uh, then it turns into like, I wish I could stop this, but then you can't. And then, you know, it's, right. And so it's a did, never you, cycle. did you ever at this point, and this is what I honestly went through this and I don't know if this is creative or what, but I went through if, well, if I do the drugs, I won't be as good. At, if I stop doing drugs, I'm not going to be as good at my job. <laughs> What's really messed up is the back to the self definition thing is I was a comedian. I was this, I was that. But then I started to be known as a heavy drug user. The people like were like, wow, he's really yeah. too bad. He's, you know, and yeah. that's something that I had to, um, but I started to define myself then as I'm a self-destructive person and that's just who I am. I can't stop it. You might as well. Because in comedy, that's popular too. I mean, you, yeah. can, you, can, you can run a bit doing that. Yeah, it can be. Yeah. So yeah, I started at, towards the end, I started to own that I'm a self-destructive person and you are what you are. And might as well be proud of it. So that's when, yeah, that's when things got pretty bad. <laughs> that's when that's that's how you're defining yourself. So you 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 did you did stand up comedy. I mean through the addiction years. That's what we're mm -hmm. so you yeah. So you you know you started in ninety six. Ninety six. Yeah. In two thousand four, you hit Letterman. So I mean, there's I did Letterman there. then, and then I lived on the road. Then I did a bunch of colleges. Um, yeah, I was I was like. It was like a two year period where I was doing like 50 colleges a year, which is, that's a lot. It's good money is what it was. Was <laughs> like, it? Is that like for, for someone that, you know, uh, I remember that time, like I would have so many $500 nights. <laughs> I would just go out. I, I always had 10 grand in my checking account because I'm a genius with money. Uh, <laughs> never invested any of it. <laughs> Not a dime of it. Oh my it, it was God. all just fun money. And, uh, and I, I remember just idiotically thinking like, well, this is the way it's going to be from it's now gonna, on. It's going to last forever. I'm always going to get these $1,200 colleges for the rest of my life. You made it in your, in your mind. Like it's over at that point. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not going to be a celebrity, but I can live with this. I'll just keep doing this. Like, and, uh, yeah. and how long did that train last? Though? Two years. Yeah. Two years. And then it was, then it was back to clubs and then, then the, uh. What really hurt hurt everybody was the 08, uh, uh, back in 08 when the economy tanked. The housing market, yeah, it cracked. Oh man, nobody had any, nobody wanted to spend any money on entertainment back then. <laughs> Clubs were going out of business. There just wasn't any any work, and so I, that was I think that was the first time. Oh, here's an interesting story. Oh, hit me. It was right before. <laughs> this was uh, I. This was. Uh, this was around that time. This was in 07. There was this, uh, how did this go? How does this start? Okay, there was, there was this homeless person who used to take advantage of me all the time. He would, he would play this trick on me all the time, right? He would uh, he'd buzz my apartment and he'd, always, 
he'd always be like, "This is a real story." Yeah, yeah. Because you can't tell with him. Like, I don't know if I'm caught up in a comedy bit or if this like actually happened. He, he would always take advantage of me. He'd always buzz my apartment, and I would go down. I'd be like, "Oh, great, it's that guy." And I would open the door, and I go, "Man, I'm not hanging out tonight. I'm not doing it." He go, "That's cool, man. That's cool." I just want you, I just, I, 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 just to get you back from last time, I wanted to give you this, this one hit of crack. And I'm like, I'm like, all right, that one hit of crack, and then you're leaving. It's like, totally, yeah, of course, I take one hit of crack. It's like, that's like, you know, I, I want, let's get more of this. Right. So, so he reeled you in every he time. He reeled me in every time. And then, um, he, he, um. We go to this place. It was, uh, it was a strip club, and uh, he's get, making the deal done. And then he's like, "I got it. Let's get out of here." And as I'm leaving, I hear Isaac Witty, and I turn around. It's the girl on stage, and um, and then I go, "How do you know who I am?" And she's like, "I've seen you on stage." Three months later, we were married. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. What's that, like that, <laughs> that marriage lasted for. Six months. Yeah. But that's the type of stuff that I would do all the time. It was a normal Tuesday. It was just a normal, like, it was, it was never, when you live like that, it's, it has nothing to do with what you're aiming for. It's just whatever you run into, you know? Hmm. And that's that, exactly it right there. Like, you nailed it. Like, you nailed that lifestyle. It's like, yeah. it's like you're dying of thirst, but you're just drinking salt water. Like, you're just going to keep getting thirsty. Yeah. But for the moment, you're like, no. I'm, I'm actually satisfied. It's great. It's yeah. Water. And then you're like, literally. What else is There's nothing else to do right it's now. So, so this is available right now. So, yeah. Yeah. That's the type of life I lived all through my thirties. So it's exhausting, you know? And, um, then but that uh, so what, at which point did you say, you know, like I've had enough. I mean, like where, where did it come? Because you told me a little, so that we read an, our, uh, read an online article about you. Yeah. Um, and that it was it was kind of a okay he's coming back to comedy he's mm -hmm. cleaned up type story yeah. but you told me earlier that's not true well i would always i would always being the optimist that i am i would always be like boy now i'm done now i'm out and so um, several rock bottoms in your life there were several you uh, like yeah and i i would talk about i would talk to friends about like oh man back when i was really bad but really, in reality, I was denying the fact, I was ignoring the fact that I was pretty much doing the same thing I was doing, except I would just talk about it in past tense. And this really, this guy, he wrote for, he wrote for a newspaper in, uh, in Minneapolis, and he was a comic too, and he wrote an article about me, and it was a, pretty much a total lie. But uh, it was, I meant well at the time. Right. I was hoping it would be real. <laughs> right. You know, but um, yeah, so then after, so... After that, then I did Conan. Then, so that's uh, 2014. You did Conan. I did 2000, which we're gonna post a link to because it's hilarious. Yeah, and you killed that. I did pretty. Was well. like a five minute set or was it? I like to, uh, about five minutes. It's a five minute set. And you just, it was amazing. Yeah, it was just the handshake. Still, I mean, to this day, is like. <laughs> to the, to like, this day, you saw it like two days. ago. I did. I saw it yesterday and the day before <laughs> that. But it's like, dude, it's, it's like. Yeah. That's still, I mean, to, to this day, it has to do really well for you. Like, do you even use that joke anymore? It's like, yeah, well, it's so, uh, that's something, when this pandemic is over, I want to buy a bunch of new stuff. <laughs> there we go. There we go. The opportunity. No, but like, but what point, and this is my, the, the most serious question, because it, some of our listeners. It's not a joke I get super excited to do anymore. I've been doing it for about 15 years, something like that. Have you really? Yeah, yeah. They still haven't figured out the correct distance to put your hand out for a handshake, though. That's something they're still working on. I oh, that's right. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Roughly the distance you can throw a microwave, or like we don't know. Like how do you, when do you put your arm out to mm -hmm. shake someone's hand? Yeah. But no, the thing that I think is interesting is because you made it out. You mm -hmm. announced you're sober, you're thriving. I mean, your mm -hmm. comedy is back. Uh, you're you're absolutely. I'm not just like talking you up, like, but you're in the best shape you've ever been in. Like is what you're telling. I just me. lost twenty pounds. Yeah. And you're yeah. just like. Well, what the where it came to the breaking point was I was living in Minneapolis. I had um, decided like I was having suicidal thoughts. I was. And how did you end up in Minneapolis? Like, is, I mean, that's... I moved to Min. I lived. I was living in Minneapolis almost that whole time. Okay. Yeah. yeah so Minneapolis, yeah. New York, LA, but mostly Minneapolis. Okay. All right. I'm with yeah. you. Go ahead. And um, uh, I I called. I, I and never... you're an everyday drug user at this point. I was, well, either, I was always either doing drugs or recuperating from doing 
drugs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, everyday <laughs> drug. Yeah. Everyday <laughs> drug. <user. laughs> that's, yeah, that's that's an everyday drug user. Right? <laughs> so yeah. Um, I called my sister just as depressed as I could be, and I was like, "It's red alert." You know, like I'm. It's it's. And you guys are close, you and your sister. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, we we well we've been close in that we always joked around together, but we never did really get all that deep. You know? Yeah. And um, But that's a different thing, T talking to someone about addiction. I mean, like, that's it. Yeah, it was kind of a new thing for me, being completely honest with someone. That's where the conversation is going. I mean, because it's like, yeah. it, it's, it's, because I did the same thing. I mean, even in my addiction, you'd clean up or act like you cleaned up, but you're not clean. I was really good at faking it. Oh, man, the best. We're I incredible. was really yeah. good at faking it. Yeah. It's like, then you have to have that moment of, I'm going to look at myself and see who I really am. Yeah. And not even to other people, I'm going to say it to me. Because yeah. I kind of feel like I'm the best at lying to me. Right? Like, <laughs> right. Because like you said in the article, you believed it. You wanted that to be true. <laughs> you really like, did. Man, if that was yeah. Isaac with you, that's, that's who <laughs> that I am. That really something. Yeah, like, if this could be true. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, if you, so the article is, is just about, he, he cleaned up and he, you know, he's, he's Redemption Road and he's on Conan and these things and his career and all this. Yeah. I had just done Conan. That's right. Yeah. And the right, secret right, behind right. it is you're still at that point. I was still using doing, methamphetamine. I was I mean, still. I not. wasn't doing meth yet. I was still doing coke every okay. week, you know. And, right. uh, but yeah, but then then it was for me. It was uh, a lot of cocaine for about you know, eight years, something like that. And then it went from that to Adderall, and then I couldn't find Adderall one day, and that's when I found meth. And then meth was just all the time. Right. At that point, but then I I was so to meth is much harder hitting in my opinion oh yeah no, it's uh yeah, yeah. It, you know what i've shown it's i always terrible. i always compare it, this is the metaphor i always think of with meth especially when i would try to get on when i'd be getting on stage um after having done meth you know I'm, i never got on stage like at a comedy club like yeah. on meth but like when your brain is just so fried it's like you know thor's hammer <laughs> you know yeah. like you're I'm so, like, I had done my act so many times. I knew it backwards and forwards. I always knew what joke was going to be next, what joke was perfect for that moment. But when I was, when I was a meth head, it'd be like, and what's next? And then that hammer's not coming, and I'm standing there in front of 300 people with nothing to say. I can't remember what I'm going to do. And you've done it so many times. I've done it so many times. I mean, it's, it's a very, it was a very helpless feeling, especially being like, this is what I'm good at. And I can't even do this right. It's what identifying, like, yeah. it's, it's who you are. This, this, like, this drug has taken away my memory to the point where I can't even do the, the one thing I'm good for. Right. So, but yeah, that's when I, I, I called my sister and I told her, I told her, I didn't, I wasn't totally honest what was going on. I just said I was really depressed. I'm suicidal. And, um, she said, come back and, uh, she's in the ministry and, uh, come back to Oklahoma, come back to Oklahoma. And we'll, Which is uh, not appealing to you. No, <laughs> no. Oklahoma equals failure to me. Uh, no, I, I, not I, necessarily I the state of Oklahoma. No, it's right. Home. Right. Having to go, having to go back home equals for failure. your life. Yeah, yeah. That's, that was me. I that means I understand. need help, and that means that means I'm a failure. So I'll get you on antidepressants. I'll you know pay for uh, therapy for you, and. Um, I told, uh, it was a Christian therapist she sent me to, but I told the therapist, I want nothing. I'm not interested in anything to do with God. You all. set the guidelines. I am like, not going I'll to go talk. to therapy, <laughs> but I'm not. I am not going to talk about that. I'm not your stooge. All right? I'm gonna, <laughs> I've seen the movies. You're not analyzing me. No, this is like, yeah. this is the, the process of the addicted. Like, this is how I, like, I'm this a is, modern person. Yeah. I know that this is a problem with my mind. Oh, I can remember this. Like, so I had to go through the therapy <laughs> thing. I had to do that. And I'm yeah. like, I'm the same way. I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm that so I get there and the therapist is telling me how it's gonna work you know what I mean like this week you'll just come in what do you want to talk about and so I said well I don't know what do people normally talk about and this is what he said to me because they answer your question with a question like it's it jacks with my head and he's like well I mean we can talk about whatever you want and I said what do people talk about when they come in here he goes why does it interest you what people talk about <laughs> Like, come on, man. Like, you know what I mean? I, like, I know what you're trying to do. Like, stop doing what you're I'm trying to do. I'm trying to right make now. you talk <laughs> yeah, instead of me. <laughs> so I just remember this, like, and then I, I, I said this to him. I said, I know what you probably normally do. You can throw that out. It's not going to work for me. <laughs> and here's this guy, and he said this, and it's like, I'm a factual person. If it's a fact, I'm in, right? If you can show it to me on paper, I'm in. He goes, You know, therapy works like over 80% of the time for people. And I was like, Well, I guess I'm the 20%. And he goes, Well, I'm just saying, you're not trying. 
and if you could be, you know, statistically, you'd be one of the 80. And I'm like, gosh dang it, that makes sense. Yeah. I remember thinking that in my head, like, <laughs> oh, you just Jedi mind tricked me into saying that you're right. Like, this therapy's amazing. Like, you know what I'm saying? No, so like, yeah. when, when an addict starts to become real, mm -hmm. it's a process. Some people think it's just like a snap, bam, it does not happen that way. And yeah. you know that. It's so, more like I wanted to go to therapy to show people that, like, I'm broken I'm for real. I'm broken for real. Yes. And this is, I, I'm not like anybody else that's ever right. They're weak. They're like weak, man. Like, yeah. I'm broken for real. I'm, show, I'm here to show you that this is, this is a different type of thing, and it's not. And, yeah, he, so here's what they did. They, have you ever heard of uh, neurofeedback? No. It's really cool. It's this thing. They, I'm super interested in it right now. They hook up all these sensors on the different parts of your brain, and they run these tests. And because of the wavelengths, uh, it, it it reads the the pulse, whatever your brain is, your brain waves, and certain parts of your brain are four different things. Right. And so they ran this test on me, and they were like, they could tell I was dyslexic. They could tell. You've got this, 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 this. You're, it says you're a slow learner. You have, and they were like, that's getting offensive. And I was, I was like, yeah, yeah. And they're like, okay, so now we're gonna do these these tests on these exercises um, for you that will um, strengthen those parts of your brain. And it's it's a type of science that a lot of it's kind of relatively new. Yeah. It's not shock therapy or anything like that, but I'm super interested. Oh man, you gotta look amazing. into it. It's yeah. great. It was especially for somebody who had been doing math for two years, and I was really slow at the time. And really, after having done it, after I did it for a few months, I felt way better. I felt way sharper. But um, yeah, so I it was about two sessions after I I was with that therapist, and we did that that neurofeedback thing. Um, with the big readout where I was, I was sitting at, <laughs> I was sitting at a stoplight and, um, yeah, that's right. I, I was, I was never a big pot guy, but I was right. so wanting to, 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 uh, cause you're skinny. panicking. I do. Yeah. Hey, okay. So if you, if you guys, and I'll just, I'm going to, if you're not an addict, you've never been an addict. When you are forced to finally deal with who you are, mm -hmm. now people that aren't addicted, you're forced to deal with this in everyday situations, yeah. right? But those of us who have had the luxury of not having to do that luxury, yeah. is hell is what it is. But um, we numb ourselves constantly. So yeah. what what was happening to him, and, and then just because I've been there, is anxiety is setting in for the first time in years because we've never felt anything we did not want to feel. It's like if you know, like <laughs> yeah. oh, I felt shame, like, forget that. You know what I mean? Like, so I just get high, right? And so. This is yeah. happening, so he's not a weed smoker at that point, but no. weed is a drug. It was and it's, it's something that allowed me to get away from it a little bit. Exactly. And I was yeah. I, I I had smoked a little I was kinda high, I had smoked some pot, which so I was and I was gonna just drive around and like get get away from everything. And um I remember I was <laughs> I was sitting at I was sitting at a stoplight and I heard on the radio it was there was something on KRMG News. And it was like the top of the top of the hour news. That's what got you. Some story. <laughs> it was some story about children being hurt or something like that, right? Yeah. And out loud, <laughs> out loud, I said, I said, how the f could you let that happen? And you're talking to God at this point. I guess that was a. Pr it was a prayer in retrospect. Sure. At the time, I guess it's I was a cry for help. I was way. thinking about. I was. I was thinking about. I was forced to be in a spiritual situation, so I was thinking about the God that I claimed I did not believe to exist. <laughs> Draw from mass. So and a God I was that you really didn't... mad at this God. I. I. I, <laughs> adamant, I was adamant that it didn't exist. Right. And uh, I said out loud. I said, "How the f could you let that?" And something broke in you in that moment. Man, it was like, <laughs> it, it was like God was in that car. <laughs> it was like God, and, hello, and it was loud and clear. At the time, I'm not the type of person who, who um, regularly talks about God talking to me. Yeah, I me mean, you neither. Know, I don't. <laughs> but yeah, right. that day, God did talk to me, and it was loud and clear because I asked the question, "How could you let that happen?" The answer was, "I gave you your own free will." And uh, and that's why things like this happen. Yeah. 
And um, the heart of men, man. Yeah, it's crazy. And it was all of a sudden I just started bawling, and I could just sense God's grace and forgiveness. And uh, yeah, I became a Christian for the first time that day, which can only be God in that moment. So for you to feel yeah. acceptance in that yeah. moment. And yeah. that's, and because I can tell you, like, we all have different, whatever brought us there, but the point is you have to come to the end of yourself before, I mean, you have to that's, get well, that's the That's how I like to put it, too. Yes. I mean, that, that's yourself. biblical. That's the prodigal son. You have to come to the end of yourself, and then it's over. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And like, and I remember, man, I had the same, the same, where you just, you realize what you are, and I mean, like, who you truly are, not the Instagram version of yourself, not right. like... Not what I can sell my family via phone, uh-huh. like what I what I've just like covered in, right? Yeah. And like this is who I am. But yeah. then there's this acceptance of, and he loves you just like that. I mean, like he he still, it's it's just incredible. Like it floods in in a moment, and all of a sudden, yeah. So you're that was your what we'll call it. I don't know. They have different words. We'll call it the awakening. We'll yeah. call it the moment that everything changed it, because you'd grown up in church, not real. It was not. It never felt like that. Right. No. I I'm, never felt love either. It was strange. And then no. bam, when that hit, it was like. I felt it was like it was like then it it was it was almost like information being like input in my brain like yeah like a, just a, a brief tutorial of you can always come to me yeah <laughs> like, yeah like, if you ever it was kind of, it was I really love you yeah so it's, yeah yeah, it's like, yeah the thing I remember really well was was uh, I'll love you no matter what you do <laughs> and in the end, it was you could even smoke a mat. And, but, but, and I would still forgive you, but it was like, but there, there, you'd have to come back to me right. at that point, but I would still love you if you smoked meth. And it was kind of a funny thing in my mind. It happened all in my head, but it was like, I was like, but it was like, do you want to smoke meth? I was like, no. It was like, don't then. Yeah. Was like, don't do it. <laughs> but it's like a point of. Where you get to the point where you understand it comes from your 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 obedience or your following Christ, we'll say it that way, comes no. from your love for him, not from a list of like I always thought church was just a list of do's and don'ts. Don't do Absolutely. This, don't that's do that. exactly how I felt. And too. then when that happens to you, it's no longer it's not a list of do's and don'ts. It's my heart is completely changed. I don't my don'ts are completely different. My do's are completely different. It's a different thing. I mean, I'm t- from that day. I'm tempted with other sins, just sure. like anybody else. But since that day, it was a miracle. I've never, I've never felt like finding Adderall. I've never felt like. And you were so at that point. You were doing drugs for how many years? Two, two years. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I, yeah. So, I was, I was addicted. You know, I mean, no, there's people with way worse stories than me, of course. No, but I'm saying even before that, you were drinking, you were doing, I mean, so oh, yeah, like, yeah. Just like a, you were yeah, I was a big cokehead before that. Yeah. And I, I like, I've never since then had the slightest urge to go out and find hard drugs or anything like that. It's, it was a miracle that happened instantly. I mean, there's been so many things since then right. that I've had to, sure. Like you say, see, I've, I see. I was able to see myself for who I really was. Yeah. And that's there's a lot of work to do. <laughs> right. So then, then it starts. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I thought. Yeah. There's that. There was that false hope of like and I'm you, good now. Yeah. Now I can get my own apartment. Like no. Now no. you gotta grind it out. Now you gotta grind it you out. Grind now now out. you gotta find a way to. Yeah. But that's where that's what kind of this is a story of redemption, man. Because yeah. that's in those moments, and I think it has to do. Um, we are tenacious, I think, artists. I mm-hmm. think we are. I think yeah. we, there, there's something tenacious in us. Like, um, And I, I'm saying that because it's, it's, it's not that people are weaker. It's just, I mean, mentally, the world is, we've already been kicked in the teeth several times uh-huh. by, the, by the time we, we've even approached success like yeah. in that industry. And yeah. so I think when that happened, because that's at the point where a lot of the addicted, they start to see themselves, but they bolt. It's like when that door opens, they can't. Yeah. And I think in that moment, it's because you have to make so many apologies. I mean, I mean, I mean honestly, how many apologies do you remember I, making man, in the next, I, like, two weeks after that? Yeah. It seems like everyone you run into, you owe an apology to. I it's like apologize. nuts for a year. I you just like to a lot of people. Yeah, I, I, I actually had to sit down and start writing letters. Like, I didn't know people did that anymore, but it's like... <laughs> You know, I didn't know how else to get <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. You're like, and then won't let me use the phone in treatment. So I'm like, you know, and so it's like, it's just a mess. But I just remember like, in that moment, you have to eat a lot of crow. There has yeah. to be a, a huge, I think it's yeah. Bob Dylan. I used to listen to a lot of Bob Dylan. And um, he said, 
I sound like really hipster in this. I had a meeting today. I don't dress like this. You guys know that. I was in a meeting, and then he, most of my guests show up in a suit or a tie, and he shows up in a hoodie, and then so I look like a total clown over here dressed like this. Like anyway, so I, I said Bob Dylan in a V-neck. Anyway, so I listened to Bob Dylan when I was younger, um, and he said drink, one of the songs was "You Just Swallow Your Pride." It's mm-hmm. not poisoned. You will not die. Yeah. And so I, it's weird because so like I, that, I don't know if God would have brought that to my memory yeah. when I'm in the middle of this, and I'm like, <laughs> I just remember going, like, "How dare you remind me of Bob Dylan right now?" Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just remember like being bad about that. But like, I think it's that point. Like, what got you through that point? Because as you start to make the apologies, it's not a, it's not a great process. It's not kind to you because no. what they, what they don't tell you is I think we're we watch a lot of rom- like romantic comedies. And the drug addict's gonna make some apologies. Everything's great, and they're high fiving people in the family, and he gets the girl, and it's like, yeah, you you, you really there's a lot of cars, like literally no. a lot of cars in your fa- in your life at that point. You've burned so many bridges, and that's... you start to apologize, and they're not on board. I mean, sometimes, like I mean, like my family's it's been great. I'm not saying that, but I mean, a lot yeah. of people you don't get to make amends. I mean, <laughs> you know, you try, right? It's like right. Well, there's also a lot of the people I apologize to. I don't. I'm not saying. I'm in no way saying that I'm better than them or anything, but but now my life is so much different. Right. I don't. It's it sucks to see it sucks to see some friendships that you thought were lifelong friendships that uh, turns out we just had drugs in common. You know, maybe that's not totally true. That's totally true with some. Like there's there have been some. Well, and it's like you don't know, but the drugs were there and we were friends. Now they're not. We're not. So yeah. it seems like that's kind of what's Plus, happening. Plus, I moved. I, 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 I left the city I, I was from. I was living in for so long, and I came back here. And um, yeah, I just all I wanted to do was I went from going out five, six nights a week to um, or being alone in my apartment. You know. There's it's two extremes. It's yeah. all you do on drugs. Yeah. It's like you're either full blown in it or you're leave me alone. I'm in a closet, right? It's, it's very strange. Yeah. This is the worst feeling, like when you're when you're all messed out in your apartment alone and and uh, someone texts you. It's like nobody move. Yeah, you no. go like window ninja on everybody. You're like, what's home? Don't, don't yes. call me. What would I do if they called me? I don't want to so, see them. It's so, it's like, there's this like, you know, it's like you, okay, and I, mine was like with my family and friends, like my family, you, you can't, you have to go around them less and less because then mm-hmm. they're going to know. You can't let too many people into that line. Yeah. Like you just can't, you know? But no, so you, 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 you make the drastic change. You come here, yeah. I'm back to Oklahoma. Um, Apologize. You're so making much. the apologies. You're just eating crow left and right. Yeah, I and mean, it's what's interesting is like you just have the natural interest. I had never had an intre- a natural interest in God, and suddenly I'm going, I'm like wanting to listen to four Tim Keller sermons a day. Right. <laughs> no, it's, it's like something in you is driving you to the Word of God. All like of this stuff that I had heard growing up over and over and over again, it suddenly meant something to me. And um, yeah, it's 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 a, just a drastic change from the from the inside out, and um, it's like getting to know yourself again, really, because it, it is a it's a new it's a totally new you. It is, and so now you're, I mean, you're doing great, you're thriving, and you're right. you're back in the comedy scene. I mean, well, I mean, during the pandemic, nobody's in the comedy scene, <laughs> but you know, but what, you made when, it uh, like forty two times already. <laughs> This is, I'm not in the comedy scene. It's like, I haven't done stand up in a while, actually. You can act like I'm thriving if you want. No one is. No, but I mean, like, you found, but not I mean just in comedy. I mean, like, you found yourself. Yes. Yeah. And through that, it's like everything changed. I'm a, for you. I'm a, yes. Yes. I'm, I'm, uh, it's, it's been an interesting journey. And it, it's fun. It's interesting. Like, you, you can probably identify with this. It's, you feel like you're growing so slowly. Yeah. And sometimes it feels like you're not even growing until you look back. Yeah, sanctification is a very slow process, <laughs> yeah. right? It's never yeah. fast enough for us. Oh, man. But it's like, you look back at where you were. So how long has it been now from, from that day? A year and a half. It was December 2018. Yeah. 
Okay, so a year and a half ago. A year and a half. And like you said, you look back and it's huge. I mean, it's been a swing. I mean, it's yes. been a drastic. It's been a drastic swing now. And you're, do you want to announce that you're making the move, or is that not? Yeah, yeah. I'm. Uh, my sister and brother-in-law are going to be campus pastors at this church uh, in uh, Dunwoody, Georgia. It's a northern suburb. It's called Chapel Hill. I never heard of that church. Yeah, but they go like, to Georgia all the time. So yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of mad at you that now you. I just met him, and now he's moving to Georgia. <laughs> so I mean, there's like, there's like, hot Lana. You know? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, I mean, my sister are always joking like oh, we're just gonna call it hot Lana all the time, and when they say when they say nobody says that, I'll be like, um, how is that possible? I say it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, not, we're bringing it back if it's not. So my nephew gets to me. It's like the, I tried to bring back the high five, not the. I don't fist bump. I'm like a. Really? I, I do the. Say to me, you think it's, you think I'm a freak for doing that? It's like I'm a freak. Yeah. <laughs> I do the high five. So when I do it now, people are like, "Wow, you really went in there." It's like, a great high five. Like, hey, what? way up top. Yeah, you're just like. Yeah. You're gonna do that with Atlanta, but it's, you know, <laughs> no. No, so you're making the move to Georgia. Yeah, I'm making the move to Georgia. Yeah. So if people want to, your your YouTube stuff's out there. There there is stuff of you on YouTube. Watch me on YouTube. I have an album they could buy. No, I do. Yeah, I, I'm buying it. What yeah. album is it? It's what's uh, the name of your album? <laughs> it's called Zero Zero Balance. When was this? When did you record that? I recorded this about eight years ago. Something like that. Is it like, is it some of your best stuff? I mean, am yeah, I, yeah. Am I gonna laugh like I did on the, the, the greatest? Conan? It's the greatest hits album. Yeah, it's my greatest. <laughs> Man, what, it's, okay. it's an hour long, yeah. I want to hear because I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you, and I'm sorry on the thing, but it's like I don't. You're funny, like in person, though. I mean, like on the, on the film, like camera. No one says film anymore. But I'm saying, like, do I lose that on the album? Am I gonna, or am I still laughing just as hard? The idea is that you're supposed <laughs> to laugh just as hard. I imagine some people are gonna listen to the album and be like, but no, I mean, like, your timing and delivery not, not my thing. is like. <laughs> Is part of it too because you're. I think you would just kill. <laughs> it's all. Like, it's all. Of, it's a, It's a building tension and releasing it. Is it? Is this, <laughs> that's one tool of comedy. I, I won't pretend like that's the only tool of comedy. <laughs> yeah. And so you've been doing this now in '96. So this is your what? Twenty fourth year. Fourteen. No, Twenty four years. Twenty four years. Yeah. I'll carry the two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, <we're just> now. <laughs> your twenty fourth year. And you actually wait a minute. It's May right now. So twenty four years. This month. Hey! My 24th anniversary. All right. Anniversary. I haven't been on stage <laughs> since New Year's Eve, but. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know what the 20, 25 is a golden. Uh, no, it is silver. Oh, uh, yeah. Is it wood? Wood. Wood. Wood, wood anniversary. Yeah. No, and so let's talk this to, to kind of cap it off here, but um, now that you're, you're sober, mm -hmm. is there a renewed bigger like joy doing what you're doing you oh absolutely your passion back for comedy i mean i, I think so yeah because you said you kind of fell into a oh, i have to do the like automatic robot i have to do these sort of yeah you could do the act yeah. in your sleep so you even said that well, you were, like i mean i've kind of looked at this i've kind of looked at this thing in tall being in tulsa as like um you know like it's i i, I push pause on this for on purpose you know, like I I don't have a website right now. You, know, you like, don't? No, no, because I don't really. I, I want I want things to be like they are right now. And then when it's I get, important, I think that's huge. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to hit, hit pause. And, you know, like it, I I don't I sometimes cite the script. He who lays his life down for me will gain it. You know, like that type of thing. Yeah. I look at you know I'm because it's no longer who you are. Right. Comedy is not if, who you are. I don't define myself that way anymore and if if that's something that god wants me to do in the future i've kind of just put it in his hands because you know there's there's uh i'm not I'll, i'm gonna pursue it in atlanta but it's kind of up in the hot air hot land <laughs> once i get to hot land yeah but uh we'll see how it goes but um i can't believe yeah. So, yeah so social media you're on social media right mm-hmm if, uh, what's your social Look, media? What is it? Handle? I'm on How Facebook right now. You know, like, I, uh, just, I'm just on Facebook and Instagram right now. I'm not a big social media guy. I'm not either, but I'm I, not. Have, I have, like, a team that do it. And they're yeah. great at it. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I don't... But it's so funny, because, like, everything that they post says posted by Jordan Parker on it. And I'm like, like I didn't do that. No. And so, like, one day they wished me a happy birthday... And it was, like, posted by Jordan Parker. People were like, you just wish yourself a happy birthday oh, on Instagram. Weird. Yeah, and I'm like... I didn't... Never mind. Like, you know what I mean? It's crazy. It was just me when I started Reckless. I was the only human in it. So all this stuff's red. Anyway. No, so 
Um, follow you on social media because I want to. I, I think uh, buy my album, buy yeah. his album, which is zero called balance. Zero yeah. Balance, and you're not going to miss any of the charming personality because it's all going to come out <laughs> through the voice. We've That's right. That. Yeah. And um, I think you want you're going to want to follow this guy because he's on the he's on the comeback in a huge way. Um, it's it's going to be something to watch. I guess it's incredible. I hope so. I hope a so. redemption story. Mm -hmm. So if it's yeah. it's is there anything you want to say to the people watching before we end this up show? Mm, I think I'm good. <laughs> I did ask him. As, I, I, his name is Isaac Witty. We're gonna keep saying that Isaac Witty because he's that's his actual name. Though it's amazing, yeah. um, and he's this just hilarious human being. But I before we went on, people like to be introduced in different ways. Like you know, what I'm saying like some people people know, like, like to be introduced by a different name. Well, like I had like so like no, I mean okay, not, maybe like a title, maybe like a name. I don't call him Chris if they're Doug or like weird stuff like that. But like one guy was like the Reverend Todd Sloggett. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Or like, oh, okay. So that's what I meant. Okay. So I was like, is that, I said, do you want to just like, I, I don't even want to introduce you. And he goes, how do you mean? <laughs> he was just like, <laughs> he was just looking at me and I was like, I mean like, you just go with like Isaac Whitty. And he goes, that is my name. Yes. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, man. Like, it was like, it was like, I could be really don't have titles. Have Sir, Susan? Sir. Surname? I would go with Sir. Sir, Sir Isaac. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Sir Isaac Whitty. Yeah. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> no. It's alright. Man, I thought it was really good when it came out, but dang it. Alright, Isaac Witty, guys, I'm telling you, he's, he's, he's one of the funniest humans on the planet. Uh, go buy his album, Zero Balance. Mm -hmm. It's on iTunes. It's on iTunes. It's yeah. on iTunes. And then social media, he's, he's, on, he's on Instagram and he's on Facebook. <laughs> he's on both of those. And he's only in Oklahoma for three more weeks. Three more weeks. So, Hot Lanta. You're getting one of the Here good I ones. Come. You're getting one of the good yeah. ones over in Hot Atlanta. Yeah. Hey, thank you, man. Can yeah. we, yeah. Thanks for having hey, me. Hey, no, All thank right. you, dude. Yeah. It's a story of redemption, guys. So it's uh, it's always neat to have to have a unique story like yours. It's very. We don't get to talk a lot of people that make it out. Oh, not, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I mean, like the odds of people dying in their addiction or yeah, that's true. It's, it's very high. Yeah. That's kind of true. a bummer to end the show on. I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, Just lucky quiet. ones. Like, we get to talk to him. No, okay. Guys, we love you. Thank you for tuning in to the Hope Show. We'll see you soon, all right? Bye-bye. Bye, too. -bye. Bye